الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters in Islam Many times that the masjid, uh, the masajid, when they give talks, when they try to give educational talks, you find more and more that they are trying to deal with the issues that are important in, in this society. Because we live where we live, we are where we are, we need to assimilate into this society in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we live in a society where there are so many contradictions. There are contradictions between what we may believe and what we see in front of us. Or what we believe and what we may practice because what we see in front of us or the society that we live in. And one of the things that are misunderstood, one of the things that is misunderstood is humility in Islam, humility, tawadu in Islam is misunderstood. First of all, in this society, it's misunderstood in this society by people of other faiths. They view humility as a weakness. If you're humble, if you're not competitive, if you're you know, weak, they look at it as a weakness. Because it's almost that you have to be successful in this dunya at any expense. Regardless of the moral considerations, the ethical considerations, and so forth. So you find that the, it's like applying the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about the dunya. إِنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ وَلَهْوٌ وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ That the life is, not, is, is just about you know, beautification, about boasting about our children, um, our, our wealth, and about succeeding in this dunya. As if this dunya was the be-all and end-all. In other words, that you have to succeed in this life in a materialistic way because there's nothing after that. And so you find in that type of society the strong exploit the weak because they look at weakness as a reason to commit dhulum or they commit dhulum because someone is weak. And Muslims misunderstand the humility because we believe sometimes, or at least we act in our actions, we believe that in the face of adversity, if someone is stronger than you, if someone is more powerful than you, if someone is richer than you, then you have to be meek, you have to be humble, you have to be weak, because, oh, Allah didn't give me what He gave the people around me, so... I have to show humbleness. I have to show meekness. And this is wrong. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ كَبَائِرَ الْإِثْمِ وَالْفَوَاحِشَ إِلَّا الْلَمَمِ Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in describing those people who show ihsan are those who avoid the major sins and the fawahish 
except the things that human beings, the small things that human beings are susceptible to because they're human beings. Inna rabbaka wasi'ul maghfirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all encompassing in his mercy and forgiveness. In his forgiveness of, of mankind, especially when the people try to avoid the big sins and they may fall only into the little sins. And then he says that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that brought you from the earth and also in the wombs of your mothers as, you know, as embryos. وَإِذْ أَنْتُمْ أَجِنَّةٌ فِي بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding all of mankind, where did you come from? You came from the earth. And not only you came from the earth, meaning that your body is made up of minerals of the earth, no. But also when you were in your weakest state, in the embryo of your mother's rahim, that that's where all of you come from. فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى So do not praise yourselves and say, you know, I'm pure. One of the problems that we fall in with this society, that's where the weakness, where we think we're showing humility. Because we have the gift of Islam, because we have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and someone else doesn't, we feel that we're better than those people. وَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنَ اتَّقَى it applies to Muslims, but it applies to others as well. If we don't, why do people sometimes show kibar? Why do people commit dhulm? You know, you hear that, you know, we see this, and, but if you don't know the reasons, then it's difficult to provide a solution. But Muslims are there to provide a solution. So people, because we, I mean, we all do it. It seems like it's a constant... You know, uh, uh, it's, it's something that we see in human beings. That if someone is, str is stronger than me, and they sh they, they're unfair with me, instead of me saying, saying, why did that happen? What do I need to do not to be in that position? I may go and do the same thing to someone else. Because I'm stronger than someone else in some way. And Allah is reminding us, you're all Bani Adam. You're all the children of Adam. We all bleed the same. We all cry the same. We have the same emotions. We want the same things. And yet, if we don't show humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will make sure that we receive no humility and we're unable to change our circumstances. Because a dhulm you know, requires a response. It requires a response from us as individuals and it requires a response from us as a group. And the, the hadith that, uh, there's a hadith in, in Sahih Muslim an Ayyad ibn bin Himar radiyallahu anhu عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال that the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said إن الله تعالى أوحى إلي أن تواضعوا حتى لا يبغي أحد على أحد ولا يفخر أحد على أحد that the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said Allah revealed to me Allah revealed to me that you should be humble, that you should show humility so that no one transgresses against someone else and no one boasts or is arrogant towards anyone else. So how do you get close to becoming in a better society? You work towards this that you show 
humility so that there isn't any uh, there isn't any dhulum. That's how to make the society better. So it starts with ourselves in order to do that. And you know, this is, the, this is one of the things that we misunderstand in Islam. Again, we believe that humi humility is out of weakness. It's not. If you make society better, it takes a lot to make society better. You have to work hard. And in doing that, you become strong. And in becoming strong, you become a role model for others. And that's where Islam, one of the, one of the, 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 the factors that uh, you know, distinguishes Islam over all other things is taking spirituality and you know the, the concepts of iman and humility and so forth, but applying it to the dunya, applying it to the real world. That's why Islam shies away from nothing. That's why we find in our religion, yes, there is reference to slavery, yes, there's reference to uh, raising your hand against another person. Yes, there's reference to war. But it's all, regu it's all regulated within the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's where religion, when we pray, we pray with our eyes open. We're in our deepest, you know, spirituality with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our prayers, yet our eyes are open because we live in the dunya. We don't live in some other world where we just look at Islam as some, you know, some nice spiritual, you know, kind of let's all feel good. No, it's how as a person who has a weakness but has the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in them to become better. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْقِتَالِ وَهُوَ كُرْهُ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن, وعسى أن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah says in the Quran that warfare or engaging in war has been prescribed upon you. In other words, it's something that you will engage in and you may not like it. You know, people think that, oh, you know, warfare and, and violence is something that's innate in human beings. This is not true. We don't believe that. We as Muslims do not believe that making war and lulum is innate in human beings. Human beings are susceptible to it, yes, but it's not innate in them. And don't believe that it is. And if you don't trust me, then study it for yourself. So Allah says that it's been written for you and you may not like it. Certainly, no one wants to go to war. But it, there may be something that you think is good and Allah knows that it's bad. Or something you think is bad, but Allah knows that it's good. And he knows, but we don't know. And the same thing with humility. The same concept that we as human beings living in this society, we have to take what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to improve ourselves as human beings so that we show the strength necessary to make us good human beings for everyone. And humility then is humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Showing humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the opposite of that is kibar. The opposite of that is what the shaitan did. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the jinn and the ins, the shaitan showed arrogance. Ana khayrun min. I'm better than him. You created him from clay, but you created me from fire. Why would any, in this world, why would any human being think 
that they are better than any other human being when they all come from the same, the same creation. They're all susceptible to the same weaknesses. And it wasn't just the kibber of the shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kicked him out because of his arrogance. But he punished him or why did he get to that level? Is because he wouldn't even retract. There's a difference between kibar and also, you know, following up in it. It's a higher level of saying, I'm, I'm not even going to make tawbah. I'm not going to repent. That was what the shaitan did, that he's rajim until the day of judgment. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no one is going to enter paradise if you have one atoms or a mustard seed of kibar, of arrogance. You're not going to Jannah. And subhanallah, how the, the, we say this hadith, but the sahabi, he, he said, but you know, he was saying that, but isn't it true that we love to have, you know, good clothes and a good, good shoes? Because that's, you know, when you wear something good, that's evidence of, you know, some kind of, uh, some kind of um, kibar in the sense that you, you're wearing something nice and you're proud of it and so forth. Let's say pride. But he wasn't talking about that. No, Allah, he said, Prophet Muhammad said, said that Allah is, jam, Allah, is jam, jam, yani, Allah is Jamal and loves Jamal. Uh, yani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beautiful or personifies beauty in everything. And he loves beauty in you. He, he wants us to be pure of heart, pure of mind, pure of clothes and so forth. That's not the kibar he's talking about. He's talking about batr al-haq. That you turn away from the truth. That you do dhulam. And dhulam is, is, if you don't give something its true worth, then you've caused dhulam. Meaning that if you're supposed to give 10 cents, you give 9.5 cents, that's dhulam. And turning away from the truth is, is dhulam. And being arrogant, disdaining, you know, being contemptuous of people. Ramatun nas. This is what will prevent a person from going, going into paradise. So we have to avoid that. And in the Quran, there's training for that. We always have to remind ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in Surah, uh, Surah Luqman, uh, when he's giving advice to his son, he said, وَلَا تُسَعِرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ Don't, you know, turn your face away from people showing arrogance. And don't walk in the earth, you know, boastful and, and, and prideful. Just like what we see here. In this society, that's all we see. From movie stars to people who are successful in, in, in business and so forth, it's just people showing, you know, what they've accomplished. Again, because what? They don't believe that there is a hereafter, there's only this world. So I have to get to the top and it doesn't matter how. And I have to show the little people that, you know, I'm, I'm the best. And at the end of the day, this person who's the best, is going to be lying in a grave, bringing nothing with him or her except what they have to offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in belief and humility. And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَن تَخْرِقَ الْأَرْضَ وَلَن تَبْلَغَ الْجِبَالَ طُولًا even this is just more to emphasize, you know, when we watch, uh, if you watch movies and anything, you literally have people who are, they're, they're so powerful, you know, and we create Superman and Aquaman and Iron Man and all these things. They're so powerful that they show you going through the earth, cutting it, you know, and they're so powerful and strong that their feet and their power is making, uh, it's like the, you know, those machines that, that uh, plow you know, kind of the earth, but it's going very fast. So you can imagine like the earth is being uh, circumvented with uh, someone who's so powerful. And that's what, You as a human being, you don't walk in the earth like that. And as high as you think you are, and those people who built 
in the Quran, you know, those people who built those high uh, uh, homes out of the mountains and, and, and so forth. Yeah, we can get pretty, I mean, we can accomplish a lot. But Allah wanted to make it, you know, to let you know, but you're not going to be as high as the mountains, you as a human being. If you're not going to be physically as high as the mountains, I want to know how spiritually you can be as high as the mountains in front of other people. Who spiritually can say, oh, I'm better than these people. That's how we treat society outside. Because we have Islam, we're like, those people don't know. We have Islam. But what we do when it comes to Islam, we don't show the strength of Islam. We show the weakness. So humility comes from showing humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The answer is in loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In showing humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. When we show humility in our hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises us. And that's where, so the contradictions are what we see in society. Those are not the contradictions you should focus. Focus on the contradiction, a seeming contradiction that says, In other words, that if you give from your wealth, you're not going to lose. If you give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not going to lose. You're going to, you're going to gain. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us humility in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we show humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, imagine we lower ourselves and what does Allah do? He raises us. We lower ourselves and Allah raises us. Raises us to be better people. Raises us to be role models. Raises us to be hum to, to have humility between us and our brothers. I may show arrogance, and you may show arrogance. We have to show humility to understand why. And we as human beings, if we can understand why for ourselves, we can understand why for others. And I will just end the first khutbah with the hadith that's very, that's very well known. The man who gave water to a dog and because of that Allah subhanahu, uh, a thirsty dog and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entered him paradise and there's different versions of the hadith. But it's interesting how it starts. It says that he was walking you know, on his way and he was very thirsty. So he's walking and, and dehydrated until he came across some water, a well. This is related by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. And he went into the well and he went and he got his water and he drank. And then he saw that there was a dog that was, you know, panting out of dehydration and he was looking in the earth for, you know, the, the, um, uh, the moistness of the soil to see if he can even get anything out of the soil. So he's eating dirt so that he can... And so he was thirsty, the human being was thirsty and he then gave water to a thirsty dog, a dog, an animal. Allah wants to show us that, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm so merciful and I give my, my money and so forth. There was empathy. He was thirsty. So you have, when you're in a person's shoes, then you know why. So you may see someone commit dhulm, you should know why. If you don't know why, then what can you do to stop it? But being humble and meek and weak is not going to stop dhulm. We have to have empathy understand why people do what they do, then we understand why we also do things that we shouldn't do. And when we show humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah raises us. And this man f gave drink to a, a, a thirsty dog, and because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him his sins and entered him paradise. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو التواب الرحيم. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين 
وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله. Dear brothers and sisters, we're talking about humility. Humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. We said that showing humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises us. And we said that people believe, in, you know, in this, people of other faiths may believe that being strong and successful in a material way, that that's the way to success. And we misinterpret it by, so they view humility as a weakness. You know, in society when they're so competitive and you as a Muslim, you come with your, you know, with your akhlaq and your good manners and you're smiling, you know, in their faces. And then the guy's like thinking, I'm just going to run over this guy because he's, he's just a, he's a wimp. It doesn't mean we shouldn't smile in people's faces and so forth. But we shouldn't understand that humility means to be weak. Humility means to understand the human nature and understand why people do things and work hard to change it. And when we were able to do that as an ummah or as individuals in history, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He did exactly what He said. That if you show humility to Allah, He will raise you. As He did when He raised Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, the liberator of Al-Quds. Everyone knows, if anyone has read the history of Salah al-Din, they know the humility of that man. But you know, it would be easy to say that, oh, he was humble and tell all of the stories about Salah al-Din because he had biographers and scholars around him who were writing. So alhamdulillah, we, we trust their, you know, their, their, their riwayah, but no one is free of mistakes or embellishment and so forth. And so they made, have made him into something, you know, greater than he was. But where do we know the truth of Salah al-Din? Where? Where? Allah knows. But we also know from the enemies of Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi. We also know that Salah al-Din, who's called Saladin in the West, is considered noble and upright. And what did he do at the end of the day? He defeated the Crusaders. He liberated Jerusalem. Didn't matter what they did in, the, in, the, in between and in the middle. At the end of the day, he won over them. But how did he win? He won in humility. How? He didn't do what they did. He was, he was noble and he was honorable. And he used his own money to ransom the people in Jerusalem who otherwise would have been slaughtered based on, on, on the, the norms of the day. When we're able to bring our understanding of our religion with making struggle in this world for something that's worth it, we're all going to die. Do we want to die like you know, and a squished worm dies? Or do we want to die in honor? <coughs> Dying in honor means showing love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Humbling ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will humble people to us. Even the biggest zalim. And Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi showed that. Richard the lion-hearted who fought him, tried to take back Jerusalem, couldn't left. He took with him the understanding and, and, and the honor that the Muslims showed. When he was sick, dying, Richard the Lionheart in, 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 uh, in, in Palestine, in Palestine, Salah al-Din sent him his own, uh, his own doctors, gave him fresh fruits. They were, they were besieged, so they didn't have access to anything. He gave him the best fruit and the best nutrition that the Mediterranean had to offer in order for him to get better. And when, when, when he defeated them in Hittin and the king of the Crusades was expected to, to be killed, he said, kings don't kill kings. Here, people don't care. You get success as, as you get it. The takeaway that I want to leave everyone with is then what we, what we should do is we should identify something, especially in this society, Brothers and sisters, we don't live outside of this society. We're not going to protect ourselves from hellfire without being a part of society. That we talked about al-bir last time, that bir means that you understand the society around you so you can be happy in the surroundings that you're in. I can be happy living in a desert, having sustenance, making a dhan, not worrying about anything. 
but I'm not in the desert. Or I'm, not, I'm here. How can I be, quote unquote, happy here? And the same thing here. The takeaway is that you need to find something that you have a weakness in, something that you see outside that you can correct. And by showing humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything you do, and you learn about the weakness, and you want to provide a solution, whatever it may be. Some people are involved in politics. Some people, there's, they want to show their co-workers something. Some people, they want to do something for their family and so forth. Identify our weakness, your weakness. Show humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise us in this dunya and in the akhirah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us our sins. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayu alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Fil alamina innaka hamidun majid. Wa aqim as-salaa inna as-salaa tatanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkaroon.